Hey, and welcome back. A little while ago, I did a video uh, regarding building your own automation server, whether it be a virtual machine or on bare metal using Arch Linux. And I went through a uh, typical Arch Linux install that took about 30 minutes to complete. Um, and we ended up with a, a working uh, automation server. So I got a lot of feedback on that video. That's actually one of my more popular videos on the channel so far. Um, there's a lot of people interested in building their own automation server. And some of you had really good success, and uh, some of you uh, were left a little frustrated um, with the Arch Linux install. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a different way to do it. We're going to be using a different version of Linux called Elementary OS, and this is going to install in more of a traditional manner with, a, with an install wizard and a guided process that will take you all the way from setting up the file systems to loading your graphical desktop. So if you're looking to build an automation server that maybe has a mouse and keyboard for uh, for easier troubleshooting or access, or uh, you just want a cleaner, uh, easier install process, uh, but still ending up with the great uh, Linux operating system at the end, then uh, this is the video for you. So I actually have zero experience with elementary OS. I've not, I've never downloaded it. I've never installed it once. Um, as far as I'm aware, I think it might be based on Ubuntu, but I'm not 100% sure even on that. So this is going to be a true uh, first time run through of installing elementary OS. And I'm going to be doing it on a local hypervisor. A local, I'm going to run it on a virtual machine just on my PC here. But uh, this uh, tutorial or this, uh, I guess it's not really a tutorial if, uh, if we're both learning at the same time. But anyway, this session is going to be You'll be able to, to do the same installation um, via a USB stick onto a, a bare metal computer or onto VMware or whatever hypervisor or server solution you choose to use for your home automation server. So anyway, enough talking. Let's, uh, let's get to it. So I'm going to start by going to the elementary OS download page. So I just Googled it and we're at elementaryos.io. So this is what the operating system will look like after it's installed. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say, just for this video, I do I do wholeheartedly believe in supporting these, uh, these great open source projects, but for this video, and uh, maybe for you guys who are running through this for the first time, we're not going to make a donation just yet. We're gonna to wanna to see how the operating system runs. And then if, uh, if, it's, if it's good for us, maybe we'll come back later and make a donation. Okay, so this is downloading now. Uh, I'll let this go and I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so our ISO has completed downloading. I have now opened uh, my local hypervisor, which I'm gonna be using GNOME Boxes, which is just a KVM hypervisor, but if you're using VMware, VMware Workstation, or installing this on a local machine, like I said, it's all gonna be very, very similar. So I'll go ahead and create a new virtual machine. Um, it already can see that we have an elementary OS disk. That's interesting, nice. So we're gonna use that and I'm going to say, we'll customize this. We're gonna give this machine a little more than two gigs of RAM. Let's give it four gigs, because it, 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 yeah, it does have a graphical environment, so that's gonna be, you know, nice. And we'll give it a nice BP hard drive for now. We'll give it 80 gigs, or as close as I can get to 80 gigs on this slider. All right, so we'll go back and we'll say create. Okay. So we have booted the elementary OS install CD. That was super easy. Now, like I said, your steps might include burning this disk image to a USB and booting off that. In my case, I just loaded the ISO into the hypervisor and it, it's booted up. So this does kind of look like the uh, Ubuntu installer. So I'm thinking, yeah, it is uh, probably based on Ubuntu or Debian or something like that, but let's proceed. So let's, uh, we're not gonna do the whole try elementary OS without installing. We already know we wanna we want to get this on a full-fledged uh, disk install, so we'll go to install elementary OS. Nice little splash screen. Wow. Okay, so it looks like we have a uh, nice graphical installer here. Okay, so here's our first prompt. It wants us to once again select our language, so we will do that. And then it's our keyboard layout. In my case, it's going to be English US. Continue. And we have two tick boxes here. One of these says download updates while installing elementary. Sure, it sounds like a good idea. 
Um, if you have networking on your um, where you're installing this, uh, it's probably best to get the updates as you install. Otherwise, you can just install it without uh, downloading updates and um, and then plug it into your network later on and run an update. I'm sure it's it's the same either way. But we're going to choose to do it this way for now. Um, I see also a checkbox here, install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. So this is probably talking about proprietary closed source software that doesn't come with a default, you know, open source Linux install. So that's probably going to include things like the NVIDIA drivers uh, that are closed source and maybe some audio codecs that are closed source. This, uh, I think just for compatibility reasons and ease of use, let's go ahead and, and tick that. Although especially for an automation server, a lot of these things that it's probably talking about, um, uh, the graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, additional things, um, you're probably not going to need them, especially if this is a server that's going to be plugged into your local network. Um, it does mention Wi-Fi hardware here too, so perhaps if, you're, if your server is going to be a Wi-Fi server, or networked by Wi-Fi rather, uh, that might be handy. So anyway, I've ticked both boxes. Uh, you can use your discretion at this point uh, to whichever you choose. I'll we'll say continue to that. Okay, installation type. So erase disk and install elementary. This is probably going to be the most straightforward, the most uh, you know clean and, and typical type of install. But we also see here encrypt the new elementary installation for security. Uh, if you're security focused, that might be a good idea. I'm going to leave that unticked because I'm not too familiar with what kind of encryption uh, elementary is going to be using. Uh, use LVM with the new elementary installation. LVM is a great tool if you especially um, it can be really handy for virtual machines um, even with actually you know what uh, strike that even physical disks uh, LVM is good. It is uh, kind of a, a Linux administrator level tool you, you should probably have some experience before working with LVM but it allows you to do really cool things like shrink and grow volumes uh, add add space dynamically to a storage pool, things like that. So in this case, uh, for simplicity's sake, since this is, this is just an example, I'm going to leave that off. But if you're comfortable with LVM and it's something you've used in the past, something you like to use, uh, by all means, go that way. Um, also, there's a mode here for manual creation of partitions. And again, that's something that if you feel comfortable with that level of control, by all means, go for it. You might want you know, a smaller or larger home directory, you might want a smaller or larger var directory, depending on the logging you plan on doing or yada, yada, yada. Uh, again, in my case, I'm gonna be using just the straightforward clean installation here. So I'll click install now. Okay, if you continue. So these are the partition changes it has made to my uh, 80 gig drive here. Uh, that looks good to me. It looks like they're just gonna be making one main partition and uh, installing everything on that. So that's fine by me, I'll say continue. And it's, as it installs here, it's asking me my location information. Uh, this is very reminiscent of the Ubuntu installer. Uh, I'm gonna say, yeah, I live in Toronto, close enough, continue. So that's just gonna get our time zone stuff set up. So here it also asked me for my name and my computer's name. So that's a handy thing. Uh, I, I actually recently did a Windows 10 install and uh, it doesn't ask you for your computer name, which I think is a terrible mistake on, on uh, Microsoft's part because especially uh, in today's day and age where people have multiple computers in the house, multiple network systems. Um, it's nice to have a friendly name like Brad's computer or, you know, Alex's laptop or whatever, instead of just desktop UG57WX. Anyway, enough of me ranting about Windows. Let's just put in our name here. So I'll say Brad and wow, it's done a uh, nice little try to summarize my PC here. It's a standard PC, but it's actually just a VM. We're going to call this automation test. Uh, pick a username. Brad sounds good. Choose a password. Password sounds good. Okay, we'll say login automatically. Sure, this is a server um, that I'm not actually going to be using, but you guys might. So uh, choose your discretion here. It's complaining I have a weak password. Well, too bad. This is Linux. I get to do whatever I want. And we'll say continue. And uh, during that whole time that I was uh, blabbering on there and complaining about Windows, it was actually installing the files. And as you can see from its output, it is, it was almost finished in, uh, copying them. And then I guess it finished and now it's actually configuring our system. So this should be up and running uh, 
shortly, hopefully. But um, what I'll do is I'll skip ahead to the end of this progress bar and I'll see you there. Okay, so we're at the end of the progress bar. It says here installation is complete and we need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. Sounds reasonable, so let's restart. Okay, so we're given a, on startup, we're given a traditional typical grub boot menu. So we'll say yes to elementary. Nice little splash screen again. Okay, so we are already in our graphical environment. That was super easy. Um, okay, so like I said, this is my first time in elementary. It looks like we've got a, a nice icon theme and a nice app bar down here at the bottom with a calendar and a mailbox and all that kind of camp and all that kind of cool stuff. Um, mostly what I'm focused on here is, oh, okay, so we have an app center, which it looks like uh, we've got some updates for some packages that we have installed here. Yep, we've got our, our update management happening graphically, which is nice for some of you. Um, I'm not going to update all right now, but what is the most important part of our install? I'm not seeing. So let's see if it's maybe in our applications menu. And there it is. There's our terminal. Okay, so it comes with a nice looking transparent tab terminal. That should be handy for uh, doing our home assistant work. Um, from here, I would just install the core applications like... Um, just like we usually do, uh, like this. Let's have a look. So I don't know exactly what package manager elementary uses, but I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say it's apt. Apt get install. Let's start with npm. And it looks like I was right. So it's using apt, uh, which means, which is great news because Ubuntu has a massive community and anything that you can do in Ubuntu, you can use the exact same commands and do here. So you'll be able to find all the installation instructions for Node-RED and uh, Home Assistant and et cetera, et cetera, out on the wild internet. Um, I wish this video was longer, uh, but this was just way too easy. So. Um, this might be a great way to go for you guys who prefer a graphical environment or prefer a more straightforward install for your servers, which will end up giving you a Linux OS in which to run your smart home services. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, and uh, I guess I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.